All right, welcome back to chapter two, section two, water to drink. So we're gonna review what factors affect water quality, why is drinking water often treated, treated before people drink it, and what happens to wastewater in most communities? Okay. Where does the water in your kitchen faucet come from? Its source may be a lake or reservoir, or it may come from water in underground rock layers. Most people in the United States get their drinking water from one of these sources. Your drinking water comes from either a public or private water supply. Most large communities maintain public water supplies. These communities collect, treat, and distribute water to residents. In less populated areas, people often rely on private wells to supply water for individual families. Okay, water quality. Now you know where your water comes from. Before you raise a glass to your lips, however, you want to be sure the water is safe to drink. Would you be willing to take a sip if the water was rusty, rust colored and had a funny smell? Color and odor are two factors that affect water quality. Standards of quality. Water quality is a measurement of the substances in water besides water molecules. Certain substances such as iron can affect the taste or color of water, but are harmless unless present at very high levels. Other substances such as certain chemicals and microorganisms can be harmful to your health. In the United States, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, is responsible for developing water quality standards. These standards set concentrated limits for certain substances. A concentration is the amount of one substance in a certain volume of another substance. Figure five shows some water quality standards from different substances. So here's figure five. The EPA has set water quality standards for drinking water, okay? So arsenic, that would be really bad for us, right? Um, is 0 0.01 parts per million. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Carbon tetrachloride, 0 0.005 parts per million. Copper, it can't be above 1.3 parts per million. Per million. Cyanide, 0 0.2 parts per million. Lead, 0 0.015 parts per million. Chloroform count. No more than 5% of samples taken in a month can be positive. So chloroform is a bacteria that actually makes you sick if it's there. And your pH should be between 6.5 and 8.5. All right, let's see if I can move that like right there. Okay. So, acidity. The pH level of water also affects the quality um, of the quality. The pH of water is a measure of how acidic or basic the water is on a scale of 0 to 14. Pure water has a pH of 7. It is neutral, meaning it is neither an acid nor a base. The higher the pH, the more basic the water. The lower the pH, the more acidic the water. Acidic water can cause problems by dissolving lead or other metals from the pipe it passes through. So calculate, concentrations are offered, often measured in parts per million. What does this unit mean? If you own one compact disc by your favorite band and the disc sells one million copies, your disc is one of the one million sold or one part per million. When, you con when a concentration is written in this form, you can rewrite it as a fraction. To, the, to this, you must put the number of parts on the top as the whole. So we have one part per million. So one is on top and one million is below, okay? So here's the practice problem. The concentration of iron in a water sample is 500 parts per million. So we would write this as 500 as the numerator and one million as the denominator. You can reduce then if you would so choose to. Okay, hardness. The combined level of two minerals, calcium and magnesium, is a sample of, of water is referred to as hardness of the sample. So here in Minnesota, we have, especially Maple Grove, we have very, very hard water. And you will notice that if people do not have a water softener, that on their houses, like especially around their um, bathroom um, 
faucets and things like that, you will see a white powder. That is this calcium magnesium that is in the water that when it dries, it forms a white powder. Hard water contains high levels of calcium and magnesium. The minerals come from rocks such as limestone. The water flows through underground. For most people, the main drawback of hard water is that it does not form suds as well when mixed with soap or detergent. Suds are very important to the cleaning process, so it takes more soap or detergent to get laundry clean in hard water. The minerals in hard water can also form deposits that can clog pipes and machineries. Soft water, on the other hand, contains low levels of calcium and magnesium. Salt water leaves fewer deposits and forms better soap suds than hard water. All right, disease-causing organisms. Okay, the presence of disease-causing organisms affects water quality. So, or, such organisms can be detected in water by conducting a chloroform uh, coliform count, which means the number of Escherichia coli bacteria, so E. coli bacteria. These bacteria are found in human and animal waste. Thus, their presence in water shows us it contains waste material. A high coliform count is an indicator or sign that the water may also contain other disease-causing organisms. All right, treating drinking water. Picture a huge smooth surface lake under a sky dotted with puffy white clouds. Leaves drift upon the water's sparkling surface. Fish swim along the muddy bottom. The lake may be your source of drinking water. However, you can be sure that the quality of water is good. Water from both public and private supplies often needs some treatment to ensure that it is clean and safe to drink. Treatment may be simple, such as a filter or a household well. Water treatment may also be complex, such as the many processes water undergoes at public treatment plants. Follow the water in Figure 7 to see what happens in a typical water treatment plant. So here's Figure 7. So first, water is filtered through screens to remove fish, leaves, and trash. Okay. This is coagulated. This means that alum is added to, to the water to form sticky flocks. Mud bacteria and other particles stick to these flocks. So, and then they go to the bottom. So they're at the very bottom and only the top of the water is then taken off. Okay. Then it goes into a settling basin. The water and the flocks then sink into the settling basin again. And then they take off the top layer again. Okay. Then after that, it goes to a second filtration. The water trickles down through, the, through sand or gravel which filters out algae, bacteria, and some chemicals. The fifth step is chlorination. So chlorine is added to kill the remaining organisms. Okay. Aeration. Forced, it forces air through the water, releases gas, reducing unpleasant odors and smells. And then seven, an additional treatment. Sodium or lime may be added to soften hard water if you have a water softener. Some communities add fluoride to help prevent tooth decay. So here in Maple Grove, they do add fluoride. That's why the dentist always asks you, are you drinking water from the tap? Because your teeth needs fluoride to stay strong. So if you ha have filtered water, you should be drinking some water through the tap or make sure you're using a uh, toothpaste that has fluoride in it so you have strong teeth. Okay. Let's go back up here. Filtration and coagulation. The first step in treating water from a lake or river is usually filtration. Filtration is a process of passing water through a series of screens that allows the water through, but not larger solid particles. During this step, trash, leaves, branches, and other large objects are removed from the water. In the second step, a chemical is added to cause sticky globs called flocks to form. Other particles stick to the flux, a process known as coagulation. The heavy clumps then sink into the settling basin. The water is then filtered again. Chlorination. The next step is the chlorination is chlorinating the water. If you have ever been to a public swimming pool, you have probably smelled chlorine. 
Chlorine is added to drinking water for the same reason as added to swimming pools, to kill disease-causing microorganisms. At this point, the water is usually ready to be distributed to homes. Water from an aquifer may require less treatment than water from a lake. Flowing through rocks or sand naturally filters and purifies the water. However, most public water supplies that use an underground uh, groundwater source still add chlorine to kill disease-causing organisms. Aeration and additional treatment. Air is then forced through the purified water. This process reduces unpleasant odors and taste. Minerals may then be added to soften the water and for other purposes. Testing samples. Public health officials regularly test samples from water treatment plants to assess water quality. The tests for these substances covered by the drinking water standards include chemicals, dissolved solids, pH, hardness, and disease-causing organisms. Private well owners should also test their water regularly to make sure no treatment is needed. Water distribution. Once it has been treated, water is ready to be distributed to homes and businesses. From a treatment plant, water goes to a central pumping station. There, the water is pumped into an underground network of pipes called water mains. The water mains branch off to smaller pipes. These pipes feed into even smaller pipes that carry water into buildings. Water pressure causes the water to move through this system of pipes. Whenever water is in an enclosed space, it exerts pressure in all directions. Pumping stations are designed to keep water pressure steady throughout the system. Rather than using a central pumping station, some communities store the water in a water tower or tank on top of a hill. Treated water is pumped up into the water tower. When the water is needed, it is released. Then the water rushes downward into the town's water mains and pipes. Treating water. Finally, after a long journey, the water reaches your house. You take a shower flush the toilet and wash a load of laundry. What happens to the used water that goes down the drain? The wastewater and the different kinds of waste in it are called sewage. Two ways that communities deal with sewage are wastewater treatment plants and septic systems. Wastewater treatment plants. Most communities treat their wastewater to make it safe to return to the environment. In many communities, household wastewaters flow into a network of pipes called sanitary sewers. Sanitary sewers carry sewage away to wastewater treatment plants. You'll learn more about public wastewater treatment systems and the technology and society feature later in this chapter. Septic systems. Some people dispose of their sewage and treat their wastewater using a septic system. A septic system centers around a septic tank, which is an underground tank containing bacteria that treat wastewater as it passes through. Sludge and scum are materials the bacteria cannot break down or that break down very slowly. These materials must be pumped out regularly so they don't fill the tank. The remaining water in a septic tank filters out through the holes. The area around the septic tank that the water filters through is called the leach filth. Over time, waste remains in the water break down. Uh, over time, wastes remain in the water break down naturally in the soil and in the leach filth. Okay, here is a septic tank. Sewage flows into a septic tank where bacteria breaks down the waste materials into simpler chemicals. Cleaner water, cleaner water leaves the tank and flows into the leach field. So, inlet pipe from the house. Sewage enters the system through the inlet pipe. Bacteria begins to break down the waste. Okay, then we also have the sludge here at the bottom. Denser waste that breaks down slowly sinks at the bottom of the tank. Sludge must be pumped out. Okay? We also have a layer on top, scum, a less dense waste that break down slowly, float to the top of the tank, and build up there. Scum must be pumped out regularly. Okay, outlet pump. Two leach fields, water and waste, that have broken down, down filter into the leach field throughout the outlet pipe. Okay, that is the end of section two. Um, this is your homework for tonight. I will see you all tomorrow. See you. Bye.